And welcome to the Northwood University webinar series. I'm Christopher Deming, and today we have the return of Dr. Dale Matchek to talk about the review and renewal of the Northwood IDEA. Last year, alongside strategic planning, a President McDonald gathered a group of 26 individuals, which included staff, faculty, alumni, and students, to talk about the Northwood IDEA from its physical manifestations on campus to its role in our curriculum, from its meaning and its messaging, uh, these individuals spent a lot of time uh, talking about this idea and its place and future. And we've asked Dr. Matchek, who co-chaired that task force alongside Dr. Tim Nash, to uh, join us today to give us a brief overview of that task force findings. Uh, Here's a couple of housekeeping items, as always. Uh, if you have questions, we will have some time at the end of the program today to address those. Please use the Q&A tab on the right-hand side of your screen, and we'll get to as many questions as we can as quickly as we can. This webinar is being recorded and will be sent to you after the fact, along with a survey and uh, this recording and the presentation materials for your perusal. And then on one final note, before we get started, if you find that what you hear today resonates with you and you think the Northwood idea and its primary text, the compilation When We Are Free, was an important guidepost for you in your own education, I ask you to join us in a campaign to provide all incoming first year students with a special hardcover commemorative copy that celebrates the 40th anniversary since its first edition. We are looking for 300 alumni to donate a copy to new students to carry and learn from. You can find more information, including how to get a copy of the commemorative sixth edition for yourself at connect.northwood.edu slash when we are free. And I'll put a link in the chat as well. So after that unusually long introduction and without any further delay, please welcome Dr. Dale Matchek. Thank you, Chris. And, uh... I want to express my appreciation to all of you who are attending the webinar today. Uh, it shows you care about Northwood. It shows you care about ideas. And uh, we definitely uh, value your uh, participation. I personally value it very much and find it very encouraging. I'm also very encouraged, and I hope you will be too, by the initiative I'm about to share with you today about how we are renewing the Northwood idea on campus. And so I have a number of uh, themes to share with you. I hope to keep my overall presentation relatively brief so that we can focus on the things that are of particular interest to you during the Q&A period. So um, with that, I want to make sure that uh, we begin with a clear understanding of what we mean by the Northwood idea uh, this is one of the findings of the task force, actually, was that uh, there were different understandings of the Northwood idea um, among faculty, among students. And so one of the first things that we try to do as a task force is to get on the same page with respect to the specific content of our guiding philosophy. And so with your permission, I'd like to make sure that everybody attending the webinar today um, can begin with that in common as well. So I'm going to read to you a statement produced within the task force uh, about what the specific content of the Northwood idea is. So um, first of all, uh, I want to say that uh, I participated in drawing up this statement. And as part of the process for doing it, I uh, decided to read as much as I could that had been written by Orville Watts. And many of you know that Orville Watts is really the godfather of uh, the Northwood idea, the person who produced When We Are Free in its first edition, and uh, who was really um, one of the important intellectuals in the latter half of the 20th century in terms of promoting free enterprise and freedom generally. So reading Orville Watts was a revelation to me. Uh, he was a fantastic communicator. And what I tried to do is incorporate as much as I could of the spirit of Orville Watts in my contributions to this draft statement, which I will read to you now. So, Northwood Idea. A philosophy is a set of beliefs and values that influences the way we think and act, and a personal philosophy 
is a matter of practical importance. It provides a point of reference for the decisions we make on a daily basis, decisions which cumulatively determine the course of our life. In the end, our success in life is determined not so much by what we have, but by who we have become. And for this reason, we endorse a set of values consistent with the pursuit of individual development and human progress. At Northwood, we believe in individual freedom and responsibility. Humans do not blindly follow their instincts. We choose. And because we can trace the path of cause and effect, we see that those choices produce outcomes, whether for better or for worse. We literally choose our future. Awareness of this power of choice motivates us to take the difficult steps to improve and to face challenging situations with hope. We reject philosophies that would rob individuals of this empowering idea by claiming that responsibility for our actions lies elsewhere. We believe in moral law. We don't believe in the unconstrained exercise of freedom. The good life requires that we use our freedom well. Our awareness that some actions cause harm to ourselves or to others puts a natural limit on our choices. And moral law is the imperative that requires each person to do what is right and reject what is wrong. It can be summarized by the golden rule that requires each of us to treat others as we would like them to treat us. Moral law establishes a basic equality of human rights and dignity. Therefore, adherence to moral law creates the conditions necessary for voluntary cooperation and mutual aid. We believe in earned success. Progress has a price. Progress happens when people prioritize achievement over self-indulgence. It happens when people conceive a vision of an improved future and then engage in persistent, purposeful effort and sacrifice to make it a reality. This requires courage, self-discipline, hard work, and thrift. People engaged in this pursuit may not succeed in reaching all of their goals, but they never fail to improve themselves in the attempt. Individuals seeking a way to benefit themselves as well as their communities can hardly do better than a career in business based on these principles. We believe in the importance of free enterprise. The function of business in a free enterprise system is to extend the range of voluntary cooperation and to make it more productive. Prosperity generated by this increased productivity makes our modern civilization possible. It makes possible the funding for our schools, charities, and government services. It produces a continual increase in the types, quality, and quantity of goods and services that we want at a reasonable cost. And these benefits need to be better understood and appreciated if they are to continue. When public suspicion or hostility to profits and business become common, there's increased public support for more restrictions, regulations, higher taxes, increased litigation. And under these conditions, realistic young people are more likely to choose professions other than business to apply their talents. These trends make it more difficult for ethical businesses to thrive. Voluntary cooperation and the productivity gains it makes possible are lost and freedom gradually eroded. The possibility of paternalistic or even despotic government increases. We support free enterprise and seek to educate people regarding its contributions to our welfare and to human progress. That completes our restatement of the Northwood idea. We discussed this among ourselves, all 26 of us. Everybody had input, and uh, this represents uh, the outcome of, of those discussions. I can tell you those discussions were uh, fun to be a part of, and uh, we learned a lot, and uh, we had a lot of different perspectives, but uh, we all agreed that this was a fair uh, representation of the Northwood idea. So I'm going to uh, go to a PowerPoint presentation now, a moment while I share my screen. Okay. So a brief outline. Uh, 
we've already covered step one here. What is the Northwood idea? So hopefully we have a fair understanding of it. And item number two, what was the purpose of the task force? I'll provide you with a little background. Uh, what went into President McDonald's thinking on this? And uh, who? what were the major themes? And uh, along with introducing the major themes, uh, I'll uh, introduce some of the members of the task force which worked on those. And what were some of the key recommendations? And of course, we will finish with Q&A. Um, so first, I'm, I'm going to stick with this slide. I'll just talk a little bit about the background behind the Northwood idea. When um, President McDonald first came to campus, uh, he brought with him the, the notion that Northwood cannot succeed by trying to be some other institution. Uh, we needed to be true to our own identity. We needed to do what we have always done, and we need to do that as well as we can. And obviously, our guiding principles, our Northwood philosophy, is a key part of that. And as he spoke to individuals on campus to get their impression of the impact of that philosophy on our education, on our campus culture, and so forth, on our communications, um, he was getting the message from some people that maybe we could be doing better. I have to admit, I was one of those people. <laughs> and, uh, you know, in my experience, uh, we are still very strong in this philosophy. And yet, as time goes by and we are removed from the founders and the early people that those founders hired, it perhaps has uh, not received the kind of attention that it did in the early years. And so I think this was a timely uh, act on the part of President McDonald. And I'm very grateful uh, for for him uh, giving us this this uh, this job. So it was a big group, a big task, and uh, so we decided to subdivide that into uh, manageable chunks, which uh, we called our themes. And there were uh, five major themes, and a working group was established to investigate and to make recommendations. Those recommendations were brought to the entire group where they were debated, refined, and then um, we combined these into a set of 15 recommendations, which were submitted to the trustees and approved by them last February. And now they're in the process of being implemented. So what were these major themes? As I go through the theme, I also am going to allow you to see which people worked on the task force, and I just want to comment a little bit. Uh, they represent all aspects of university operations and even going outside the university um, with respect to alumni or um, you know, um, our board of trustees. So we've got faculty representation, student representation, admissions, even physical plant. We tried to get the entire community uh, represented in the task force. And then each member was given the themes and asked, which of these themes are you most interested in? Which of these themes do you feel you can make the best contribution to? And we basically assigned roles uh, on the personal preference of the members. So the people that you see here on the team are self-selected into this particular theme. And I won't introduce them individually. That would take too much time, but uh, you can see uh, who was involved. So clarifying and communicating the Northwood idea. Uh, we want to make sure that everybody knows. Uh, it's a little bit surprising sometimes when I get a student who is a perhaps a sophomore or a junior and can't really articulate what the Northwood idea is. And sometimes um, they they think they know and it's really not, uh, doesn't reflect what we understand the Northwood idea to be. So it's pretty clear that we needed to improve our communication and we need to make it easy to understand. Another theme that we chose was basically culture. And how do we allow the Northwood idea to influence our culture how do we make sure that there's a consistency between a consistency between the values we talk about 
and the way we conduct our operations, the way we interact with employees, the way we interact with uh, students and alumni and uh, our stakeholders more generally. And so creating that integrity around the Northwood idea, that was the special interest of this working group. Third theme was in the uh, fundamentals of our operations, which primarily means academics, but it wasn't limited to academics because there's also athletics, there's admissions, there's there's a, a lot of other areas involved here, but primarily we are an educational institution. And so the focus of this particular working group was on our curriculum and our academic programs. And there is our moderator, Chris Deming. He served on this working group, uh, Campus Vision. So this had to do with uh, the future of Northwood and what, uh, in, in particular, uh, what initiatives could we undertake that would improve Northwood and the delivery and the campus in ways that are consistent with our philosophy, in many ways to make our philosophy a visible and important part of any visitor's experience, any student's experience. And you'll see some of their creative ideas. I'm very excited about them. And then finally, um, a commitment to get uh, some internal learning about the Northwood idea, to do some assessment around the Northwood idea. Uh, what do people think about it? What do people understand about it? Um, and uh, how that changes over time. So uh, the collection of data, the design of surveys, things like that. And by the way, if you're an alumni and you get requests for, uh, you know, survey completions, I, I really do appreciate it uh, when you answer those. And, um, you know, we do try to use the information we gather to improve our institution. So those are the themes and the working groups. Let's talk about some of the recommendations. So. One of the uh, communications uh, ideas that we had was coming up with a foundational phrase. You know, uh, this is not even a sentence, really. It's just, uh, it, it should be a few words that communicate as well as possible who we are and what we believe. We need to emphasize the human elements of the Northwood idea uh, for better or for worse, uh, I would say for worse, many people think of the Northwood idea almost as a political platform or, uh, you know, something to do with uh, uh, polemical uh, indoctrination, things like that. That is not what we're about. We're about education. We're about educating people for living life well. And we need to emphasize that in our communications. Some of our current messaging uh, was written a long time ago, and it needs to be uh, revisited, modernized, uh, put into uh, ways that um, our current generation of students can, can easily relate to and be enthused by. And we also uh, wanted to um, produce a, a number of different communication items using different types of media, uh, video, audio, social media. Um, we were thinking perhaps developing a series of uh, webinars around themes of the Northwood idea. And so uh, I think these are all elements that we recommended. And you should see the fruits of this in the fall of 2021. And people are working on this as we speak. And I've seen some of the preliminary work and it's, uh, I think it's very good. I think it's really going to eliminate that uh, story I told earlier about a student might reach their junior year and not really be able to articulate it. I think all of our faculty and stakeholders will have a pretty good idea about what, what our Northwood idea means. Second recommendation, we need to integrate the Northwood idea into the curriculum. So, in particular in our general education courses. So when it comes to history courses, political science, philosophy, 
um, we should not have the Northwood idea in a silo taught in our philosophy of American enterprise course and nowhere else. We should make sure that faculty are making an effort to reinforce the Northwood idea in all these other courses. And so we thought we could identify key courses where this could happen and build that into the course objectives. We decided that we were going to move the Philosophy of American Enterprise course back to freshman year. I am personally very enthusiastic about this, and we received a lot of support for this recommendation from President McDonald and uh, a lot of help from uh, academic VP um, Kristen Stehauer. This is happening this fall. And so we are redesigning that course to make it suitable for freshmen again. For those of you who had that course with Dale Haywood or one of our other iconic faculty members, this is the Philosophy 110 that you remember. And by introducing it at an early stage in their education, and then developing it throughout their general ed coursework, and also by including a freedom project in their senior year, uh, we think we're going to have a progressive development of the Northwood idea in a student's education here. And even beyond their undergraduate. Um, the DeVos Graduate School is a huge asset to many of our undergraduates who continue on and uh, to others who are encountering Northwood for the first time in graduate school. Um, there are ways in which they are reviewing their curriculum to see if uh, they can do some of the same things that we're doing, even to the extent of introducing uh, new programs. For example, I know there's an initiative right now in uh, public administration, uh, which will obviously be related to our core of philosophy. And again, uh, some of those should be uh, happening in the fall. We also thought it was important to have internal communication, not just in the classroom, but really throughout uh, the campus community, whether that be athletics, uh, physical plant, and so forth. So um, we think it should be part of the review process when we go through program reviews, when we evaluate uh, the accomplishments uh, of our employees throughout the year. Is there anything that they did specifically related to enhancing our philosophy? Um, was there a consistency in the way they conducted business and so forth? Um, one area for improvement that we identified was in our, our hiring process. Uh, there is an effort and always has been an effort to make sure that prospective employees understand who we are and that uh, they their personal values are in alignment with the mission of the institution. And so um, we we're already doing that. We think we can improve that. Um, at the same time, we want to make sure, because we are a university, that we are an open forum for all perspectives and that nobody should be self-censoring or, or uh, be insecure um, for challenging or questioning what's going on on campus. And so uh, we want to make sure that there's clear guidance but within the framework of an open intellectual environment. And we want to create some initiatives to recognize employees when they make a unique contribution um, related to the Northwood idea in our campus culture or in their particular program or department. And uh, Human Resources uh, is working on this right now, and uh, uh, there's uh, been some changes already, and uh, those will continue and should be fully in place by the fall of next year. Uh, this year, sorry. Thought leadership. We sometimes get the feeling that uh, people who uh, don't know much about Northwood uh, may not realize uh, what we stand for and what makes us different. So. We need to be better with our external communications, and therefore uh, we need to think about um, hiring somebody who's a prolific communicator, maybe a charismatic communicator, somebody who can uh, go outside our, our own Northwood community, uh, maybe talking to 
chambers of commerce, going to conferences, and representing Northwood and upholding our values and, uh, you know, giving people an idea who may not have heard of us that they should they should investigate, find out more about us. Uh, we also wanted to uh, get students involved in this process. So we want to encourage students that are particularly motivated to have the opportunity to co-author um, published works with faculty, uh, to participate in conferences. And so uh, there are opportunities that we're trying to develop for that. That will hopefully be uh, fully underway by the end of this academic year. We also felt that we have some showcase events in place. We want to improve those events and we want to make them more accessible to, um, again, the people outside the Northwood community. We also want to encourage uh, more awareness within our community and more participation among our faculty and staff in these events. These include such things as the Freedom Seminar. I know some of you on this webinar uh, did drop in on our Freedom Seminar this year. Very proud of what we did. And we had uh, over 150 people that did participate at one point or another. And I think this is a great way uh, to promote Northwood University and our philosophy uh, to and to continue your education as our students graduate and, and become alumni. So we, we hope to, we were 150 or so this year. I don't see any reason why we couldn't uh, increase that to 500 uh, people involved in some way or another in the future. Freedom Week is another initiative that we have. Um, Dr. Tagaroff has put that together since he arrived at Northwood and uh, we can really uh, improve that. And the Forum for Citizenship and Enterprise, which Glenn Moots is uh, leading at Northwood, uh, all of these showcase events where we bring in fantastic speakers, uh, nationally recognized experts from around the country to speak to us about events and issues related to our core values. Uh, these are great opportunities for all of us. And uh, those, because the Freedom Seminar uh, was promoted already, we put that due date, spring of 2021. It's already happening. We also want to recognize among alumni or even people outside our community, we want to recognize those who are living the Northwood idea. Again, we don't want to just talk about ideas. We want action. And for those who um, show by their life that they understand the Northwood idea and can demonstrate how it relates to individual success in life and to human progress, we want to recognize what they've done and accomplished. So we already have programs in place. We want to relate it more concretely to our core values. We have an outstanding business leaders program, distinguished women program. Uh, we want to invite these people back to talk at some of our showcase events, and we want to um, provide them with opportunities to interact with our students. And of course, we are already doing this. Uh, we need to do more of it. We need to increase our educational outreach, and uh, what we're referring to here are basically going beyond our students that may be on campus or attending uh, through our adult degree program online. Um, we wanna make sure that, that we're getting the message out more broadly. So we want to create a Northwood University Speakers and Writers Bureau, and we want lecture topics, presentations that we faculty and staff have in the CAN. We can make that available to various groups who, who want to hold events, luncheons, and dinners, etc., and uh, we want to make sure they know what we offer and that we have a platform with them. We also want to create more online seminars focused on particular issues related to the Northwood idea, or just maybe create an element or take an element from our philosophy of American Enterprise course and create an online uh, course uh, on that material. We have on campus McNair Center for 
uh, entrepreneur, free enterprise and entrepreneurship. They produce a lot of uh, good publications. We need to distribute those more widely, both internally and externally. And we need to increase uh, faculty participation in those publications. And that's ongoing. Uh, I've written some essays for them and other faculty have done so. And we are trying to get those uh, published in various media outlets. And we need to promote a, an intellectual campus culture around the Northwood idea. So we'd like to start a luncheon series around the Northwood idea and, uh, you know, get speakers from among our faculty, but also bring in outside speakers to address uh, that. And we need to get students to participate and uh, broadcast it so alumni can participate as well. You know, I, I feel like I am going a little slow and I haven't left enough time for your questions. So I'm going to just skip to one final thing, which I'm very excited about, and then I'll go to the Q&A. Freedom Trail. This is a physical infrastructure. If you visit the campus now, you'll see it's being transformed for a number of reasons, recovering from the flood, etc. But in addition, we are putting together a visible representation of the Northwood idea. We call it the Freedom Trail. And we already have places that will be incorporated into the Freedom Trail. The Lincoln on the Prairie statue, which is an iconic landmark on our campus. The Dale Haywood Memorial. And we are uh, going to have a statue of Milton and Rose Friedman. Uh, he's the author of Capitalism and Friedman, <laughs> Capitalism and Freedom. And um, uh, he's going to be part of the Freedom Trail and uh, quotes from Booker T. Washington and others. Uh, this is a very exciting event and we're, we're raising money for it. We've already successfully raised money for a number of new, new displays. So uh, that's very exciting. And now I'm going to turn it over to you for your questions. If you have any. All right. Well, thank you so much, Dale. We, we do have a few questions here about uh, messaging and availability, and uh, we can talk a little bit more about uh, how these things are coming about. So uh, we have a question from Beth Bryce. She says, it would be wonderful to have an infographic of the Northwood idea, four pillars to use when explaining it to students in relation to their career goals. Maybe there is one already? Uh, no, you know, there isn't one that I'm aware of, but here's the thing. There are people working on this right now, and I don't know uh, personally what uh, what their output is at this point. So I haven't personally seen what they're producing. Um, but I think that's a great idea. Um, we Fortunately, we do have some people with uh, communications expertise. And I'm sure that they are getting very creative about how they're going to present this and what they're going to develop. Uh, in relation to the document that you were reading earlier, um, Dr. Machek, uh, will that specific document be available online? And I think just to clarify, I think we were planning to include that in the email that goes out after this webinar. But just if you could um, talk about that a little bit. Well, uh, again, it is my hope that that goes online because I think it's pretty good. Uh, however, um, that material, along with some other material produced by the task force, was submitted to the Board of Trustees and is now being executed uh, through the executive offices. Um, and so we have professional consultants that are working on this, and I, I certainly hope that that becomes available. Uh, on our website as part of the rollout of our new uh, communication strategy. Excellent. Uh, we have a question from Wesley Hoyle. Uh, given we don't want to make the Northwood idea about presenting a polemic, nonetheless, a polemic against the Northwood idea is highly fashionable in many areas of public discourse right now. Would the task force agree that even if we do not want to go on the attack, a strong quote unquote defense of the Northwood idea is needed? Yes, that was definitely one of the motivating factors uh, for renewing and uh, re reviving the Northwood idea. We definitely feel that this is a moment where Northwood needs to be true to its heritage. And that if we are, that there will be many people uh, who will benefit from that. 
even if they don't come to Northwood as a student, even if they don't support us uh, through their philanthropy, uh, just helping to communicate what we believe are, are important ideas. Uh, this may seem a little strong, but I think uh, America needs Northwood right now. I think our culture needs Northwood. Be be Northwood. Yeah. I will say uh, we are getting close to the very end of our time. Um, before we end, I always like to, when we talk about the Northwood idea, just as a refresher, to read that final sentence of the final statement of the Northwood idea from Orville Watts. And he says, Quote, this, I believe, may be the most distinctive feature of the Northwood idea, the view that our graduates should look on business not merely as an easier way to attain ease and affluence, but as an opportunity for utilizing their highest human qualities and attaining lasting satisfaction in a life well spent. Uh, undoubtedly, Dr. Matchek, you will be at the forefront of this experience, and we, we really appreciate all the time and effort that you've uh, taken into renewing and reviving the Northwood idea on campus. Um, for the sake of uh, time and respect for your time and the time of our attendees, uh, thank you so much, uh, Dale, for joining us. It's always a pleasure to have you on. Uh, for those of you who have uh, any further questions, feel free to um, place them in the chat, and if we can, we'll forward them on to Dr. Matchek. So thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next month for the next alumni webinar series. Thank you.